interesting. We are beginning to round out our playoffs, and the games this time should be pretty close, as we've had only two O's up until this point. But now we're jumping into Dark versus Solar, the rematch of the rematch of the rematch of the rematch. Now, he needs to win at least one game. I was actually, I spoke to him for a moment in the makeup room. He's really stressed about this. But he has to win at least one game to maintain his spot in Premier, period. If he goes down 0-2 because of Morrow's 2-0, will not get that spot, that fifth place spot, and will go to the promotion matches, will not be set for 2018 Premier. So this match is very important for Dark. Uh, and for Solar, obviously, as well. Solar, the defending finalist here. MSSL did not have his greatest season ever, currently sitting down at seventh place of 10. Those will favor Dark here, as I believe you said you did as well. I have to give yeah. the edge to Dark also. He did fail in the season uh, two finals for 2016 in this very matchup, in this very ZBZ. Solar was able to take that game seven, but this is a best of three. This is a different era, a different time. I think Dark will have his number in terms of the head-to-head. -head. Build orders are so important in Zerg versus Zerg. Did take the 2-1 over Biel, but so did pretty much everybody else. So not really indicative necessarily of uh, <laughs> of where yeah. he is at ZVZ-wise. Um, part of the reason why I voted for Dark here is the statistics when you go into them, they definitely favor Solar. It's like, okay, this guy beat him in a big finals, best of seven, went all the way to game seven. Solar seemed like the genius at the end to pick a cheese build, a rush build on a big map, and it caught Dark off guard and won Solar that finals. And then again, in SSL Premier Season 1, Solar was able to 2-0 him in games that weren't that close. So, for me, it's Dark with so much on the line. This guy has been so consistent for so long. He's not getting like crazy finishes or anything like that, but he definitely does, you know, have more on the line here compared to Solar. And when it's a best of three ZVZ, I, I would just have to give that slight favor to Dark here. Yeah, I think Solar can show depths in ZVZ builds and, uh, you know, really unique strategies. If you go into a best of five, you go into a best of seven, but in a best of three, Dark will likely kill you with his really crisp timings. Well, you only have really two lives in this best of three. If Dark gets two really good timing attacks off of you, it all ends here. Dark will take the advance. He needs to make sure he gets at least one win to keep his hopes alive of staying in Premier and avoiding relegation. So this match matters so much for him. It's a huge best of three for ZBZ to decide so much, especially for our player on the left. The Splice player on the right, who made it all the way into the finals. Just trying to stay here in SSL Premier and give himself the best shot. Let's see how it goes down on Ascension Ire for game number one. Butterfly Jin Air hopping on to Ascension to Ire for game number one. Down in the bottom right, the Red Zerg. This is Dark. And his opponent to the top left, it is Solar. Other things, other implications for this series. We have to take a look back to our second series of the night. And remember that Deer lost his series 2-0. So a 2-0 score here for Dark. And if Innovation is able to match that, Deer will not go to playoffs. So this is a scary moment now for Deer, who's watching at home. As we said back then when he took the 0-2 in the most Deer fashion ever, is that he's going to now have to cheer for his former teammate here in Solar. There's Samsung buddies before. And now, even though directly enemies in terms of facing off against each other in this tournament, Dark, if he uh, takes this series, it's a very scary prospect for Innovation. Or sorry, for... Uh, Deer watching the match against Innovation and Classic later on tonight. So, hoping that Solar takes the 2-0, give him the best option, the best opportunity to stay in the tournament. Very nerve-wracking moment, no doubt. Dark is taking the slightly greeter, but greedier build here. And one extra drone. Otherwise, this is pretty much dead even, just dead the same. Yeah. 
Toller going ahead and adding extra drones of his own, looking very similar this time around. Ascension to Ire uh, does have a pretty wide choke at your natural. You uh, definitely can get in there if you want to go for some kind of Ling Bane timing, but the expanse between the two builds is gigantic. So if you try to go for a timing like that, it will be scouted very soon. They can get up a wall in time. And so generally you don't see any crazy kinds of builds like that. Um, you can go for pressure builds like that and try to, you know, get a, a fast third base off of it or get some tech down. But I would expect both of these guys to just play it safe to start off and, you know, get a hatchery, throw down a baneling nest, and go from there. That is how this series begins. And remember, Dark is most famous for his two base roach timings, sometimes three base. Both Dark and Sue, I think by far the best Zerg versus Zerg players in terms of roach timing attacks. And we're not there yet. They are just playing as safe as can be, as you say. I mean, direct mirror builds. Look at the production tab. It tells the story. Solar one drone behind. It has the money to make an extra drone here. So we'll catch up. Ling speed and the Baneling nest almost identical here with the mirrored openings. So we're going to have to take a, a step back. We're going to have to take a back seat to these two players this week to see who adds the Roach Warren first, who starts the first layer, and... With the third bases mirrored here as well, I mean, it is as dead even as it gets. We'd expect that Dark Wu, the first person to add that Roach Warren to try to hit that timing after he scouts the third, which he has just now oh. seen. Okay, that's one edge here. <laughs> A small one, but it, it does matter. Nice snipe there by Solar to get that last shot. Seven range queens are pretty good. Uh, and Solar even going to get a full scout of the main where it doesn't look like Dark was able to get quite the same scout. So small advantages going towards our Blue Zerg to start things off. But outside of that, I mean, we, we've talked about the mirror builds. I would expect this to just go into macro mode from here as, uh, you know, their bases are going down. They shouldn't overmake the, the Banelings or anything like that. Yeah. Probably will just go into Road to Warren here. Well, Although. as you say that, this is, this is the dark way. They both know the, they're at identical timings in terms of third bases because despite Solar getting that Overlord pick, he did uh, dark with his other Overlord at the 9 o'clock see that base. Solar is getting Banelings in position, though, as his scout does confirm a lot of Lings being made. Banelings on the high ground here. If Dark runs in blind, he could crash into those Banes and take massive hits. Solar is very confident that with Banelings on the high ground, he will be able to defend this. He's also adding a layer back at home. His transition point is so nice. This is oh. what I'm talking about, not paying attention. Oh, boy. He can't let that happen again. Oh, and he almost throws it back. This is ZVZ. <laughs> you know, we, we are watching this matchup. Looks like not the best trade there for Dark once again as he loses one of his Banelings. There goes another for just three Lings. So far, Solar definitely winning the knife fight yeah. of Ling Bane out in the middle of the map. He made, he had better tools in order to do so because he saw this push coming a mile away from that Ling scout earlier. Few Bane is still available here. Dark is going to have to back off. And it's not the worker deficit from the extra Lings that he made that's the problem. It's the lack of lair. Uh, and Solar just has that so much faster. We'll need to eventually add a Roach Warren as this doesn't even kill any larva. Um, it's going to be Spire. Spire tech from Solar though now that that scout is gone. And after he held it off with flying colors, too. He's even going to come in here and snipe this queen. Oh, boy. Dark's not paying attention. He's microing these things because this is the what he considers to be the more important moment. Doesn't get anything with that Baneling hit. Just crashed into a queen. More and more of these uh, drones under assault now. Solar in a massive lead now. Everything is going perfectly right for Solar. And nothing at all is going right for Dark. Every trade has gone Solar's way so far. The, the scouts, the builds, the tech, everything is in Solar's this court. This third base is in so much trouble now with this attack. There's barely anything over here. He's got three Banelings morphing, plus one that is available. Trying to come in here and snipe those Banelings already. He's okay to take the bad trades because he knows he has so much stuff. Catching He's looking roaches. For these. Yeah, this is pretty big. He's catching these reinforcing roaches now, just seeing more and more lings across the map. He knows that he's building up a gas bank as well. If he can keep the roach count low, the roach counterattack against his Mutalist will never be a threat. Grabs this queen, and Solar might just end the game before the Mutalist fly out if this continues. Oh boy, talk about a one-sided game one. This is what we've been seeing all night long. He's just getting so many of these roaches one by one. Out they march straight into the grasp of Solar's Lings. 
Roaches need to have critical mass where they can fight against a Ling army like this, and he just never was able to get up to it. And because these trades against the Roaches were so good, he kills so many drones. But the most important thing of all is that the Mutilus, they, the one vulnerability of going Mutilus, which he doesn't know about, by the way, was the Roach counterattack where you just don't have enough units to hold. You desperately get out spines. You have to defend with as many Lings as you can muster. It's very difficult but because the Roach count is so low now for Dark and the rush distance on this map is so large, the Mutilus will just never have to turn around. In fact, he's showing them here. He's killing Overlords, which will eventually supply block Dark. But Solar is in just a massive lead. This game belongs to him. He is in full control. Has enough units here to defend. I think he only loses one drone there. And now he can transition himself to the Roaches. He will be behind in upgrades and he will be behind in Roach count, but that's going to be okay because he's set up with a better worker count and map control with these Mutilus to turn it around. As you can see, the Roach Warren is being made. We do have the Queens here that were remade by Dark, so he will be holding on in this game. As funny as it is, you know, with the crazy start. Every trade was going in Solar's way, but it wasn't like gigantic game-ending trades. He was getting pretty big advantages, but nothing to end the game. So Dark's still in this one. The Link Runbys aren't really going to work anymore. And there's enough defense against the Mutas now where we can transition. Yes, Dark will be behind, but again, it's a big map. They both have three bases. Dark was competitive on his worker count. Now Solar has taken the big lead and, and 14 workers ahead. His roaches aren't much against the Mutas, and every time he has to run them between bases, their Mutas are taking pot shots. As long as he doesn't go into range of the Spore Crawlers, which do, uh, you know, plus infinity damage to Mutalists there and bio flying units, <laughs> um, you know, he's going to be in good shape. The, th the key for Solar is to just take his better economy and end up with a better Roach count, and that's exactly what he's doing here. Being very greedy against this Spore here, but he's so far ahead, losing Mutilus isn't a problem. It's not like he needs these to defend counterattacks. He's going to deny a gas. This counterattack feels so pitiful now because it's so late, and Solar already has the better Roach count. So that was the key, is that he kept the Roach count low before showing the Mutas. Yeah. He has plus Look, one, he does, but I mean, his roach count is just too weak to even attack here. I like the greedy fourth base where he's like, okay, I mean, you only have mutas over here. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of time before uh, you can get a gigantic roach number to kill me. So let me try to squeeze this out. And if I can get away with it, this will be one way to try to catch up. As you guys can see in the supply, it doesn't seem very realistic, but when you are behind like this, you do have to make certain plays in order to come back. Dark has even been forced to make Hydras because of the Mutilus doing so much damage to him. He has a great Overlord spread on the map and obviously has dominating vision because of the Mutilus control. That's why he was able to pick off some of those Roaches there with the Mutilus because he saw them coming across the map. Even though they didn't commit to the attack, he had vision and knew that the Roaches off creep were going to take so long to get home. I don't know if he's seen the fourth base actually, but it looks like he's not interested in it nope. either way. Uh, neither of the players have seen each other's fourth bases, so they do not know. The unit tab is pretty funny right now. It's it's 28 roaches and what will be 12 ravagers and eight mutas to 16 roaches and 12 hydras. Hydras only useful in roach versus roach battles if you have similar roach counts. The hydras give extra range, but they are not tanky. They are not going to be able to sustain themselves through this damage. Bile's going off here, and it looks like Solar is poised to just crush this game number one. Nearly double the army supply here. And there's just no way Dark defends this. Mutilus not even needed in the fight. Yeah, I mean, just going to fight it straight up. Not even using those Mutas, as you were saying. Forcing uh, Dark to micro his Hydras back bit by bit as he slowly picks away at this one. He's being very safe about this fight. Doesn't need to force it right now. A bunch of his supply is in the Mutas as well. Doesn't have the numbers that we do, but will slowly push forward. Just getting Dark's better army. trades yeah. every time. Gross of Bile is a pretty good spell, I've heard. Yeah, Dark does have the plus two, which is part of the reason why he's able to will these roaches down so well. But this third base, or sorry, fourth base, is not even really accomplishing anything. Okay. Overlord's trying to get in on this fight, but it's not going to save The drones! Them. Here they come. It's not going to be enough in the end. And GG. there it is. GG. Solar crushing base in game number one. There have certainly been some frustrating losses today. Whenever you see that in chat, by the way, the Korean characters typed, it meant that whoever typed GG did it so fast that it changed the input to English, and that's the character that comes out if you press the G key. So, you know in that moment uh, that 
it's a pretty bad time. If this were a Kespa sanctioned league, <laughs> it would get a penalty for yeah. typing it out like that, but um, it's not, so everything's okay. By the um, way, Jackie also made Odyssey. Yeah, I knew that one. I knew that one. But uh, this guy makes a lot of maps. I heard he does. Um, yeah, but, I, I kind of feel almost like a fool for for voting for Dark after after seeing game number one. I mean, that was a crushing victory. That's like stats versus Bjell level, right? It's not what we were necessarily expecting. I thought with so much on the line, Dark was going to come out and be competitive in the game, but he doesn't really look like he's on point. Like everything going on, the trades, the the tech paths, he. He's scouting. Even. Yeah. Like, Solar is just all over this guy. He looks so much more confident. It might be that little buff that we saw before from Hero versus Deer, where Solar, he's locked into seventh place. He can't move. It doesn't matter if he wins or loses tonight. It's all about the money. He is playing so comfortably, whereas Dark is not at all. I think the scouts were the big key factor. Had he not scouted, he wouldn't have had units in position when Dark committed to that many links. He saw that coming a mile away and was just set up by default. Sure, Dark could have micro better, but he was always going to be fighting a losing battle there. Solar gets the lead as a result. Yeah, so here we go, guys. Game number two on Odyssey starting right away. Here we go, game number two of this ZBZ. Up in the top left, this is Dark. Down to the bottom right is Solar, his opponent. And everyone knows right now Deer is hoping so much for this win here for Solar. But make sure that Dark is no longer in contention for playoffs. There were a lot of uh, I guess things that had to happen, certain um, ca cases that would occur that would allow Dark to get into playoffs instead. And he was worried about Dark and Innovation, of course, uh, taking his fourth place spot in playoffs after the 0-2 defeat today. Mm -hmm. As this uh, group of players, as you said, is so close. It's very top heavy. The top is very close, the bottom is very close, but there is no middle ground here. And not really, no. I yeah. mean, Maru is the most middle ground sure. that we have, right? But it's it's only him, really. I mean, Solar, he's trying, but he's lost too many games to be really considered up there. And we he's, don't on have, the, he's on the cusp of the middle ground. And we don't have a player like Innovation who nearly went undefeated last time, was very clearly number one. We weren't even sure who it was going to beat until today. His stats just barely got his win there with Deer losing his series. That's how that worked out. So early pools and early speed here for both players on this map, playing it safe. One drone mining uh, well, for Dark for a little while. I guess he just put back in. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a hyper-aggressive micro-based DVZ, at least from the start of this one. Yeah, both of these guys will be pooling their lings in the main. The, I mean, they, <laughs> I don't know if they've been practicing with each other, but Mirror builds both times. One time just a macro-focused one, this time a very aggressive build off of one base. They've got the same amount of lings and the same timing on the speed. Will the lings run into each other is the real question. It doesn't look like it as one's going to the top, one group, and the other group is going towards the bottom. I mean, this is the systematic way to do this build on this map. They're both doing it. The big difference is that Dark left one drone mining gas for so long that he will actually have the possibility of making a baneling nest, whereas Solar will not. And if he can wall his ramp, if he played a little bit safer, perhaps that would be a huge factor. Is they're both just going to wait for speed and hope for the gamble. Now it's crazy now because they're both going to have to micro on the attack and the defense. And that's always a crazy thing to do when your mirror builds in aggro like this. Okay, Solar sees it first. Okay, the Lings, they need to get as much damage done as fast as possible. The Lings of, of Solar, they're going to get over here, and Dark already has enough Lings to defend. But he has the Baneling Nest, and that's a key factor here. If Solar realizes this, he's definitely going to back off. As if he commits more Lings and tries to run in, he could find himself hitting Banelings on top of the ramp. Obviously, Solar has slightly more money, very slightly as a result, because he didn't mine any gas, so he had that extra drone mining minerals the entire time. This is actually such a crazy start. Yeah. It's just, he doesn't have the larva. You know, you're talking about 
the the minerals, but what are they really going to be put into? You know, he's he will have a little bit extra to make some drones here, it looks like. Finally gets his own Baneling Nest, but it's going to be much later. Tries to scout here, and two for two he gets in. We'll see the Baneling Nest, clicks on it. So knows that a frontal attack at this window of time is definitely not reasonable. And in fact, the Overlord will identify the Baneling here as well at the natural. So I think this is going to be the moment where we kind of get a little bit passive here. Although Dark, again, is trying to be aggro. We'll get spotted here. It's great that he saw the timing too, exactly, of the Baneling Nest. So he's like, okay, if Dark is going for, you know, some side Banes on, on the left side, you know, I, I definitely can scout this right at this timing. Dark is going to get his own scout in the main. Sees the timing of Solar's uh, Baneling Nest, funnily enough. But now Dark does have a couple more lings, maybe two or four extra. It's really going to come down to the micro. The Baneling hits are going to decide everything. Yep, this is it. Such an important moment for Solar and Deer. Dark as well. He needs this win. Oh, great hit for Solar already at the beginning, but Queen is surrounded here. Dark gets the snipe and backs away. Solar sending Lings back home. It looks like, no, changes his mind. Wants to counterattack with those. Dark does have a few Banelings here in position. Another Ling uh, surround here on the Queen. Solar is not as successful. Queen stays alive, just barely. 18 health. That is going to be important. Needs to keep that alive for Injex. Yeah, we'll back it off, in fact. Uh, Lings are going for the Assassinate. I Looks like she it. goes down yeah. off, off screen. Down goes the Queen. Another one is in production. Solar has had more drones during the entirety of this crazy night fight on both sides of the map, so does get that slight advantage in economy. I do think he took the better traits very slightly as well, though, and I think that this kind of puts us in... Um, or sorry, I should say Dark had the better trade, so which puts us in kind of an even uh, place. I think Solar will eventually take a small lead uh, because Solar can't do anything with his extra link count, his better traits he took, and he did lose uh, those queens. Here comes the Ling run by again in the main base, wants to scout, doesn't see anything, but will start his own lair back at home. Ooh, this is a great see on this drone here, denying this third base. Yeah, did get a Ling in the main did Solar, so he, he saw some stuff, was eventually cleaned up, and two Banelings for Banelings, popping up the ramp, Queen in position. Things should slow down. You can see that the lair was scouted in the main as well of Solar. Let's see what Dark decides to do about this. I don't think he'll just, by default, assume it's going to be Mutilus play. I think he'll expect a faster roach speed coming out from Solar. Commits to the third hatchery again. We'll get it placed this time. I think it's very important now that Solar scouts this is going up. That will determine how aggressive he decides to be with these roaches. Dark also has seen with his Overlord that there is no third base up for Solar whatsoever. So he knows he's taking a risk with this. And that Solar will be able to, if he identifies it, likely punish. Small advantage Nidus. in trades for Nidus Dark. Nidus coming up right now. Oh. As the faster lair is used by Solar for Nidus tech. Something you don't see all too often. He's making more and more queens a couple at a time from the two hatcheries that he has. Dark, he has a scout on the fact that there's no third base, but also that there is a layer on the way. So he has to assume, you know, some kind of tech is coming out on two base. He just doesn't know what it is yet. Yeah, yeah I think he's probably just assuming it's a regular roach push. And he's hoping that Ooh. with his own roach war and he can defend this with the extra larvae he's going to have from the third base. But if he doesn't know about the Nidus, obviously, then the fast reinforcement may just break him. Did he? I think, oh, he canceled, oh, he canceled it. it. Okay. okay. So, totally different scenario now. He starts at third base. Has a slight lead in terms of Roach speed, but everything else is pretty good for Dark, in fact. He has the better Roach count, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, just slightly. Yeah, it's, it's close, but he has a third base first, and... If Solar doesn't get anything done with this advantage he has in Roach Speed, then Dark is going to pull ahead because he has more Larva and will have better mining. Spire. Solar being a little okay. bit indecisive in this game is a little bit all over the place on it. And, I mean, he does have units in position to deny any Ling Scouts from getting in. The timing is going to be wonky because Dark might be saying, okay, I know he might have a Spire just based on the timing of his lair and the fact that that third base came out so late, but I don't know exactly when it's coming in and it will come in later but it looks like dark should get the scout now with this overseer okay sees it queen not enough to deny 
Dark sees the third base timing, has been seeing it for a while. The Overlord will finally be pushed away. Looks like Solar wanted to do a Baneling run by, but Dark has all these Overlords rallied over here, so... We'll uh, get away with it. All those Overlords being rallied there, though, is kind of an Overlord Depot the Lings could harass later, or sorry, the Mutalists could harass uh, once they pop out. Dark taking the safe path. Again, the Hydralist Den does not want the Mutalists to kind of snowball against him. And it's kind of a different game the last game, though. The Mutalists last game were made after Solar had a great defense, had control of the map, was able to pick off so many roaches. In this case, though, Dark, uh, very even in army size. Solar has the faster plus one for his roaches, but isn't going to be using them as his primary form of attack. You know, kind of a wonky game. It's hard to say who's ahead per se right now. I think Dark will pull ahead if the Mulas don't do anything. It depends on how many... Oh, well, okay. Castle Spire, so... <laughs> All right, Solar, can you just pick a tech, man? <laughs> the tech he picks is Baneling Speed, so I think he's real-time adjusting his strategy based on what Dark is doing. He's like, okay, I know he saw my Spire. He's going to go Hydras. Let me get Baneling Speed to counter that. And it's it's a weird kind of style. It definitely keeps your opponent guessing, but you do spend a lot of time and cancel money, uh, you know, going for different tags. But definitely could work out if he gets the right engage. I mean, Baneling Speed can be pretty crazy, especially if you hit that juicy center of the Hydras. Yeah, he only made nine Hydras. Baneling Speed's still decent against Roaches if you get the big hits, if you have enough Roaches to back up the attack. So it's like that wants to be uh, the attack here for Solar, or that's his game plan as he moves out on the map. Okay. He, somehow, he if somehow he gets the flank on the Hydras, gets him from the back, then yeah, this could be a great I, fight. I think that's the play. Uh, didn't have any lings up until now. Just made them. Here come the Banelings. Seven, eight, nine on the way. He's keeping them at home for now. He wants to keep it a secret. Doesn't want to show his Baneling speed to Dark, of course. You got the Lurker down on the way for Dark as he was moving out, but then 24. decides against it. 24 Banelings. He's going heavy Bane. Dark has such a large Roach army. If he could get those Lurkers out and make those Hydras, then obviously he will shut this down, but I don't think he will have that ready in time. As the attacks moving across will be scouted by this Overlord. Actually, it's just uh, Ravager Roach. He doesn't see the Banelings. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Bit too preemptive, misses the Biles. Nothing, nothing that we say is correct in this series so far. Here come the Banelings. Okay, he wants to get a great hit on these. Look at Dark already splitting his army, getting the Concave, even having some high ground here. So the Ravagers and the Banelings, it's all about AoE. The Roach count actually quite small for Solar. Here we go. Grosa Biles in the back, and the Banelings rolling into the Roach is in the front. Not big splits, trying to get into the back there. They do get on creep and get some hits onto those Hydras. Was it enough, though? I don't know if it is. There's a lot of Ravagers here, which means the Roach Hydra army is definitely stronger for Dark. He has a defender's advantage with rallies as well. Some of these Roaches start to fall. The Hydras in the back not as tanky, but there are Queens here, and it looks like he will defend. Solar pushed back now. So much invested into this as well. So much gas in all of those Banelings. And recovering in Roach count will be difficult. And the bigger problem, as you were mentioning before, the Lurker switch here is going to be an issue. How can he afford to deal with these? Also, the gold base uh, is up and running. Dark has, or sorry, uh, Solar has his own. But the Lurkers are going to allow him to control the map. See what he uses them for, because there's different ways you can use Lurkers. You can just bring them with your army. You can have a few set up defensively. You can do a little bit of both. Looks like, uh, for the time being, the few Lurkers he made, just the three, three yeah. are going to be with his army. He wants to go for a counterattack. He did win the attack with Flying Colors. He is going to attack here with uh, plus two as well. So he's going to get that Burrow, but the Corrosive Biles immediately come down. As we mentioned before, there's not that many Lurkers, and Dark has to be careful about taking a fight when he's not exactly ready. I love the amount of... Uh, Ravagers that Solar has in his army. It's a perfect number to snipe these Lurkers with the Corrosive Biles. Yeah, another Bile coming over here, just basically making sure he hits it right time. They bur every time they burrow, it gets the double kill there with those Biles. Dark finding himself fighting into a Concave. He has the Roach advantage, and he has a lot of reinforcements, but Defender's advantage comes to Solar. Will he have enough here with a plus two? These Roaches are all so low. Looks like he's just barely made it work. Yeah, lots of low roaches on the map. That defensive advantage that Solar does have, it doesn't look like he can pile enough roaches into Dark's army. GG is called. We're going to a game three. So many of those roaches were low. Had he had just a few more vials, maybe he could defend it. I mean, it was really close.
just because he had the defender's advantage and those first piles were so great. His patience to hit the piles as soon as the lurkers burrowed. So that was really well done. He got the double lurker kill there with the first, uh, or sorry, the second set of piles. Um, but the other problems obviously were that Dark had plus two. He had the larger roach count because he was very clear and methodical about his tech path. Made the Hydras just for safety against the Spire he scouted. Didn't overcommit to Hydras. Then made them more valuable by making them into Lurkers. And just took four bases. Played standard, whereas Solar was trying to play mind games all game long. And each and every time he couldn't fully commit to one, Dark got further ahead. Yeah, Dark with great composure, not falling apart after that really uh, dirty game number one where he's like, okay, that's one I just want to forget about. I, I don't want to remember that one. Was able to recompose himself, get ready for game number two. As you said, he played a very safe style, and I think that definitely does work against a trickier player like Solar. We are jumping into overgrowth for game number three. ZVZs on this map are always insane with the double gold bases and just the short rush distance, so anything could happen in this one. I know we say that a lot, especially for mirror matchups, but it's game three of a best of three in ZVZ on Overgrowth. Overgrowth. This is going to be a fun one, Wolf. Oh, yeah, it is. I think Dark is going to be hyper-aggressive. Will Solar just blind play defensive? We've seen mirror matchups, or sorry, mirror builds back-to-back. -back. This one, I think, will be different, though, on this map where you could do a lot more with aggression. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty crazy game. Let's jump into game number three on Overgrowth and find out who will take the win. Game number three to decide everything, especially for this player down in the bottom left. It is dark. And up to the top right in blue, it is Solar. Started off with the win in this series, but definitely uh, non-committal, let's say, in terms of tech in the last uh, map. The Nidus was an excellent idea and certainly could have turned the tides onto Dark. It was very risky. And the Mutalus switch as well, he didn't have the advantages he had before. And I like the idea, as you say, it was mind gamey to, as soon as it was scouted, clear the scout and get Banley speed. But Dark just never overcommitted to Hydras, so... Even though we had some incredible Ravager micro there, I think Solar kind of painted himself into a corner with how many different types of tech we saw him either show or go towards. It's actually not, at least at the beginning of this game, going to be a hyper-aggressive pool timing for either player, especially not uh, Dark, which is the big surprise here. He's shown so many different aggressive times, but, you know, we're just just—we're still just getting our hatcheries out. Let's not say we're not going to see aggro out of him just and yet. Solar didn't make any gas either to start, so perhaps an earlier third base out of this player. It's a, it's a risky build to throw out on overgrowth, but... I mean, anything could get you ahead. A anything that could get you ahead against a player like Dark would be pretty nice. We'll see exactly what he wants to go for. Might just be extra queens and a, and a quick wall, something like that, but still no gas. Going up to 450 minerals. It's really interesting that Solar is long distance mining from his drones as well. Because even though it says 16 of 16, that's, max that's actually the maximum efficient saturation. But up until, I believe, like 20 to 22, you actually still get a small advantage from continuing to mine uh, from a the base. It's, it diminishes, but yeah. I wonder if this is a miss rally or what his plan was with those drones. But either way, gets the spine up. He's being safe. Yeah. Well, if you're not going to have gas, I guess you need something else. Cancels but. it even. Well, he goes to the front and he sees the creep at the natural, so. And he had full vision of where Lings would have run in by now, so. He's surprised to see Dark is playing it passive, but playing very reactionary as a result. Yeah, I mean, look at this safe Baneling Nest out of Dark. He wants nothing but to go into the late game against this player. Feels very confident in that situation, I suppose, against a guy like Solar. And at the end of the day,
Dark is going to be the one who takes that first third base down there. It's not going to be scouted. Should have seen the drone going over there, though. Yeah, very likely he did. Can always verify with the Overlord soon. Dark's Overlord placement is a little bit riskier in terms of Queens, but he's going to see 100% that there's no hatchery there. So Spinecrawler again here for Solar. That leads me to believe he didn't see the third hatchery. But again, he can always check. Will he be successful with this scout? Two for two, he got in with his links, but the third time, Dark has the answer with his faster link speed. A Roach Warren coming up, a Lair and Evo Chamber for Solar. Looks like he might even consider to do a hyper aggressive push. Or is he just really scared with this building placement? I think he's misread what Dark is doing. Dark is playing very passive, is droning up heavily with the third base, and Solar is tight walling. Yeah, I mean, if you don't get speed for your lings, how are you going to get an efficient scout, you know, in the main? How are you going to know exactly what tech he's going for? He could barely even scout the front with that ling. So uh, definitely sitting back himself, playing it safe, getting that lair up, getting that wall up, and saying, okay, I'm just not going to die to you. But Dark definitely will get ahead yeah. on this. Dark delayed the creep tumor with those lings as well. He's just constantly trying to scare Solar. Solar has identified the hatchery now. If he ha if he didn't know before, he definitely knows now because he sees with the creep. Lings get in the main base. He didn't kill the drone though, so the hatchery will get started. And there's no way that two lings can force a cancel on this. So finally, Solar will get the hatchery up. There's no way we can know for sure, but it very much feels like he was playing scared and now seeing the third hatchery. He feels the pressure to come out here and take this. He's got four roaches and two queens. The lings are coming over here. He's going for a counterattack oh. at the wall too. We need to see if that is blocked. It is not. It's not blocked. He's in the main base with almost all of these lings. Looks potentially for the snipe onto the queen. He's got lings in two mineral lines now, Dark does. And Solar is definitely going to take some heavy losses here. Remember, Dark has a third base already finished back at home. No mining at the natural right now. And three drones, possibly four. The fourth one. Five even. Lings just forcing these roaches to run circles here. Dark even in upgrades, including roach speed. is going to have a competitive roach count very soon. And he's got the better larva as well. I think Solar just misread the situation and unfortunately panicked when he saw the Lings going towards his third base. Yeah, this is almost looking a bit like game number one, funnily enough. But uh, Dark is really in a nice spot now. I mean, you, you can't really overstate that fact. The third base of Solar only coming up now. He has double Evo Chamber. Evo Chamber, not Evo Chamber. Um, <laughs> But he only now starts the plus one to his carapace. I feel like he could have been squeaking that out a little bit earlier. Looks like Dark is going to get his own Evo Chamber, his own second one, I should say, to pump out that carapace. And yeah, I mean, the carapace is just not as significant as, as attack, obviously, with, because Roach is two burst damage. It's like, number one thing is your Roach count, number two thing is your attack, and number three thing is like how many queens you have for transfuse, and then like number four is... How many is Ravagers Karapis. are in there, yeah. the, the Corrosive Biles, the Micro. It's like how many links like are in your Car army also? <laughs> yeah. Like how well did you split? How was your con game? Like Carapace is like down at the bottom of the list of importance. So even though he has this uh, slightly ahead, and I don't want to really... I am being a bit facetious about how you know it, it matters, but the attack is so much more important. The Roach count is so much more important. In terms of worker count, we're dead even. 58. This game is pretty close. I feel like Solar has definitely made all the right moves despite having that early deficit to try to get himself back into this. He has Burrow on the way too. Uh, no Burrow movement just yet, but can be cute with this Burrow micro if he wants. I think Overgrowth is definitely a nice map because the bases are so split up in a line where you can definitely use your burrow movement roaches to get into the main if there's no detection and then harass the fourth, harass the third with some more burrow movement roaches. Is going to get that burrow movement upgrade now, a little bit later. Nice uh, corruption here, contamination on the plus two, just to maintain his lead. Oh, see, so you can also see the micro of the Overseer when the Ravagers chased it. It flew on top of the Overlords, so pretty much as to say, uh, yeah, I dare you to buy all this. You'll take your overlords with you <laughs> if you try and you fail. Gets the second contaminate on the armor. The carapace also slightly delayed, so that slight lead he had is kind of evened out now as dark. We'll get both of these upgrades first, it looks like. Fourth base, gold base. And uh, 
Yeah, that's a, a bit greedier than Dark is being right now, just going for that safer bottom right expansion. So does have that nice little option, uh, especially because now that the fourth base is that far away, the Burrow Movement Roaches can definitely do a bit more damage. But so far, Solar is just playing way back, even though those upgrades are finishing up right now. It looks like only now is he sending some Roaches to the left side to do some counterattack harassment Dark, with those upgrades. so confident out on the map right now. And yeah, these Burrow Movement Roaches are going to come across undetected, but Dark is just picking off Overlords. He's trying to find any sort of value with this army that he can, any sort of positive trade. He sees that Burrow Movement Roaches are on the map. With You see those extra spikes on the top. And actually, even though he saw that, he's not reacting. doesn't have any detection back at home. First you pop up, there's going to be more in the main base. This triggers Dark to attack. He will need to eventually defend back at home. Solar has an even roach count here, so he can't just break this. In fact, Concave on top of the ramp. More reinforcements coming out here. Dark is in trouble. More Ravagers for Dark, but the Corrosive Files are being dodged by Solar and taken by Dark. So and many look drones. At all of these damages going down. 13 drones, I should say. It almost, 16 in total. That's going to be two mineral lines here. It almost feels like he just doesn't know that this was happening, at least didn't react at all. Still not a single Overseer being morphed here for Dark. Not one. And he doesn't have any detection for these. Where's his Overseer? Is one being made now? The damage is already done. And he's lost his position in the middle of the map. Took a bad trade there, too. And Solar has every lead in the book. Yeah, you could tell that he wanted to force the fight, but that's not really what you do in ZVZ anymore unless your opponent doesn't have enough Ravagers, right? If you push in, then you're eating all the corrosive files that will eventually make the trade pretty even at the end of the day, even if you have less Roaches compared to your opponent. So Solar played it very well. I, I really like this. It was not scouted by Dark once again. And now Solar's just like, okay, I'll continue to harass and try to out micro you on the map. Okay, Bile is just crashing through here. Solar avoids the majority of them. Heights back again, being very patient. He has the concave lead, he has the roach lead, which in close quarters obviously will favor Solar. But if he uh, eats any of these Biles, it's going to be a problem. But that's really what Dark is hoping for, and Solar is just never messing up with his micro, never making a mistake here. But eventually, the roach count of the defender will start to mount up, and he will be pushed away. This has been such a cost-efficient trade for him, though, and he's got the gold base. Eating a bunch of Corrosive Biles needs to run away. Still roaches remain at the natural somehow, some way. The main isn't even mining anymore. There's not much to mine there anyway. And Solar Smartly is going to back off, regroup. He knows he's got a big lead now with that fourth base. I would love to even see him, you know, move towards the fourth. Maybe he doesn't even need to. I think at this point, just looking at the numbers, can just take a straight up fight. Is going to go for my first suggestion and move some roaches over here. But it looks like Dark is prepared this time around. Dark is finally prepared for this. He's not going to fall for this trap yet again. And in fact, it has the jump on Solar in terms of the Biles for this fight. Macro Hatch going up in the main base here for Solar as he starts to realize we're getting to the stage where he's maxed out. He's building a bank. Having more larva is going to be a quintessential to remaxing faster. He's also adding a Spire. We'd like to see him take his own fourth or fifth base, whichever way you want to look at it, to the top left. This is not going to be a place you want to fight into Biles, though. This is a risky endeavor what Solar is messing around with, but he wants to do it again together with this harass force. It was never cleaned up, only pushed away. When there's a will, there's a way, I suppose. And really just taking advantage of Dark there, not having the sufficient defenses. Earlier in the fight, Dark had a bunch of overlords moving around with his army. I was thinking he was F2-ing a little bit uh, before in that fight as things were getting desperate, but now it seems like he has sufficiently defended. Solar has a massive bank comparatively. Dark did just max out, and it looks like Solar is going to go into Spire, whereas Dark goes into Hydras and uh, lurkers afterwards for the follow-up. He saw the Spire with that Overseer, so that might be part of the reason why he adds the Hydralist in. And obviously when you're maxed out, Hydras can give you some extra range, just like the Ravagers can. Better trade here for Solar. But the bank is because Solar just massively won favorable trades over and over and over again. Also, is forcing drones to be remade with these attacks. Bit of a weird uh, pathing those Roaches took to fight, so Dark will eventually clean that up, taking very few losses. Let's see what he makes. Just a few Mutalists for now. And I, I don't want... I wonder how many he's really going to commit to. I don't think he'll make too many. Perhaps just wants to try to snipe Overseers, for example, and then use his more roaches. Eight. Okay, eight. I think he's waiting on uh, becoming not maxed out. You know, he's he's got the gas, 
but he's taking trades, trying to trade away some of his roaches. Will be losing some of his drones as Dark goes for his own. Spire, too, under attack. Yeah. We'll see if he loses that. Uh, Solar doesn't have any units nearby to deal with that attack. Here come the, the Mutas, though. Okay, this is going to give map control very briefly to Solar, but he will need to clean these up. 13 roach, or sorry, 13 drones go down as well to another Ravager attack of Solar. These guys are blow for blow. When we were getting to a pretty low worker count at this point, Valdez, in the <laughs> 40s, he does save the Spire at the last moment here and has a decent Hydra count, so the Mutalus attack is kind of dealt with for now, you could say. This base forced to evacuate, though, and uh, I feel like Dark is actually doing so much more with his late burrowed roaches than Solar was able to accomplish all game long. Solar wasn't expecting it, you know. Uh, the Mutas, though, are getting a lot of off-screen damage, uh, lots of harass damage, now going into main, probably looking for some of these gas drones and some tech. Fortunately for Dark, most of the tech is at the natural and at the third, so won't have to deal about uh, with tech getting sniped. And these Mutas will eventually be pushed away by the Hydras. This is quickly becoming an interesting game. The, the drone counts get reset, essentially down to about 40 for each player, and they're still maxed out. Uh, dealing with Burrow Roaches in the late game is one of the most difficult things mechanically to do in this matchup, where you have to be watching your army so much or you just lose the game immediately. Imagine if DTs were tanky and you could mass them, and they would just kill everything and then escape and then come back, and then also could just rejoin as army units. That's basically what this feels like in ZVZ, is you're just struggling to have detection everywhere. You can't just add a spine crawler and a spore to deal with this. You need units in position. You need to respond quickly. And you always feel like you cleared them up, but they're actually just right under your nose. Very annoying to deal with. So we're seeing heavy losses on both sides. Economy is slightly favoring Solar, and he has the better uh, bank. As you were talking about before, it's always been the case. He is going into his own lurkers here as we go to head to Supreme late game now. Our most exciting series of the night by far, and our most exciting game oh, yeah. now. Well. <laughs> Didn't have much competition, to be honest, sure. compared to those two O's we had earlier on. Uh, liking Dark's position slightly because of the earlier Lurker Den. Can get those out on the map faster. Of course, isn't going to have the same information we do about the timing of Solar's Lurker Den, but might look to put on some aggression, some pressure after getting these Lurkers out. Dark hasn't bothered to take his gold base yet, by the way. Still just sitting there. We'll have that in his back pocket, along with that left side base, if things do get into an even later series. Okay, Lurker's very much clumped up here, too. Solar did punish the Lurker play, even though he didn't win game two. He dealt with the Lurkers very well on the defense, so to make sure those are split or in better position. Definitely not wanting to be at the front of the army. Okay, here's the spread. Decent here. The Biles are going to connect. There's the Potential double kill again, he gets it. Thinning the Lurker count out. Has the high ground advantage too. The Lurker AoE is so difficult to deal with. Well, these players doing some counter harass. Looks like Darks will be better as there's no defense over there. Trying to get those Lurkers into position close to that hatchery. If he can snipe that, that would be fantastic. More corrosive Biles coming down are going to miss the so Lurkers not, in that fight. Not defending. You know, he's having so much more trouble than Dark has had with these Burrow Movement Roaches. And the units he has in the main, there's no drones to Whoa. kill there, so he can't do much with this. Well, we can have the explanation right there on screen. Solar doesn't have all of his units in the defense. Half of them, or about a third of them, are going to the fourth base. He wants to shut down the economy, and this might not be a bad idea. He almost mined out that gold. If he can defend from here at his main, but take out the one mining base of Dark, that would be pretty huge. Especially if he can take all the drones with him. He needs a more defensive setup than this. And already the Lurkers are cutting these bases in half, drawing the le the wedge between them. No detection to deal with that Lurker. Looks like Solar might actually lose control of his main base here. That would be disastrous as Hydra is beating the army. And yeah, looks like that's what we're going to. Advantage Dark, though. He's already in position to do that damage, to take the base trade. But we do have Mutas on the map. After the Lurkers got morphed, Dark only has... Okay, he's got 16 Hydras. Uh, definitely is going but, to be but ready. But most of them are back at home, and they could be killed they by the Roaches. They out. I, I want to see exactly how many Hydras are in the actual army. Doesn't look like too much. What, maybe like four or five, it looks like? I think there's like eight okay. in the main army. Buda's coming out here to help defend. There's no Hydras right here with this army right now. He's going to come over here with these Ravagers, though. They, if they bile correctly, can help deal with this. A few Hydras, I'd say exactly eight. Good counting there, Valdez. As so These will finally be cleared up in the main base. The fourth base is still not mining. It's building right now for Dark. 
Whereas Solar still has a full base and a half of mining of his own. So that's really going well for him. Dark really couldn't swing the hammer in that corner base against Solar. And he's actually playing it a little bit scared, you know, more passive. He's like, okay, I just want to get my base up. And he's just trying to stop the harass from the Midas now. Larva bleeding out as well at the old third base of Dark, which means he's losing Larva, a valuable resource in the late game, especially once we get to max out armies. And Solar has finally relegated a group of units to the top left, so no more run bias will affect him there. The Mutas are not going to be a valuable part of Solar's army, but if they can keep drawing Dark away while he recovers uh, his mining, then it's going to be in good shape. Actually, that was a group of overlords I, I spoke too soon. I thought he had units over there. Very close by, he does. And the users are just going to try to find something in the main base here. There's not a whole lot, as you say, just the lair, really. And uh, the, the spawning pool isn't going to be too useful, but it could force a uh, reaction out of dark. He's now taking the uh, gold base over here on the right side of the map again. And the gold base is, will be a huge infusion to his mineral uh, mining, of course. Solar pretty much mined out his entire gold base. Can take that a little bit later, but if Dark can secure this gold base and not take too much damage on the left side of the map or in the bottom right, uh, he de definitely can come back in this one, but Solar has a timing here. Yeah. Looks like he wants to take it. He realizes he has the larger army because he's had the longer mining and he had the better bank for so long. See if we're gonna catch so many of these drones. This is disastrous for Dark. Okay, it's huge. Solar in good position. It's taken out the Roach Warren as well. This might just be the beginning of the end. Dark is going to try to base trade yet again, but it failed last time. And Solar has enough time to send units home. He's already done so much damage here. Doesn't need to kill much more. He has Mutilus still. This army has very few Hydras. And Solar, I mean, he's he's been mining from that top left base for so, so long. He's looking for as many of these Lurkers as he possibly can Hydra's find. Hydra's targeting him down too. Going to lose a couple of those Mutas in the end. Dark is going to snipe that base. Solar just has so much larger of an army, he can even leave units to kill the buildings of Dark while coming home to defend. He has to micro still, he can't just 1A into this many Ravagers. There Space are so many. Look at the Lurkers, they're in position to stop this attack. Perfect on Burrow as on well. Burrow, so good here. The Ravager lead here won't matter if he can't get into position to utilize them. And the last mining base of Dark, it took him so long to rebuild this. It is going to go down here. The army of Dark, smaller and smaller, uh, indecisive in this late game as to what to do. And he struggled so much to the mid to early late game against the Burrow Roaches. Solar dealt with them a lot better. I, I have to say, I think Solar just I think outplayed it's over. Dark in this series, especially when it got scrappy like this. That that play to go snipe the bottom right base was the exact right play. I was thinking about it, and Solar, he went for it. It was perfect, and I think he's going to win the series now. He hasn't lost that base in the top left. He had this sufficient defense. He and now always, he's going to just go group up. He's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, he always had the vision lead, too, because of the Spire, which helped him defend the first base trade as well. We'll lose a lot of these Mutalists now, and the base survives, but he has five drones mining to the 25. Four of them are on gas. I mean, he has a mineral bank, so I guess There's that's the last what he's got to do. <laughs> There's the last guy right over there. And Solar can now just defend this gold base. This is going to get cleaned up in the main. Feels like this is the beginning of the end for Dark. Yeah, kind of the anticlimactic end to this crazy base trade that we had. Uh, didn't go full base trade scenario as both of these players were definitely respecting the amount of damage you can do when it's like I say the void you only have one base here pumping out all of your minerals for you know just making as many units as possible and continuously staying maxed out because that one fight is so important and as long as you have some mining to get maxed out that's more important than taking an extra base and trying to defend that because it's hard to keep your uh, your units always defending all those other bases kind of a longer topic that sure. we can't fully cover but I mean this game is certainly over. I suppose Dark is going to find something with this, but now needs an Overseer to kill the drones right now. That was the one hole in Solar's defense, but the Burrow is going to be enough without an Overseer nearby. This base undefended. There's one Lurker here and a Queen, but he could just target down drones. So many Peak. drones lost for Dark. Yeah. Well, he's going to come over here. There's no detection, as you mentioned. So they snipe one and move out. Looks like Solar has retaken his gold. 
This seems to ma this match matters so much to both players. Mattered more for Dark, obviously, unless you think of Solar and Deer as former teammates working together to get Deer into playoffs. But Solar is just playing so meticulous. He probably could have ended the game several times uh, earlier, but he just wanted to take the absolute safest route to victory. Especially when you got lurkers on both sides of the map, you don't want to make one false step and run straight into a lurker line. So I don't really blame him for it. Definitely. Solar is one of our more like prideful players. He loves to win and loves to, uh, you know, practice his heart out for these matches. Can be a little bit of a trash talker yeah, too. Yeah, a bit, a bit of trash talk here and there. Definitely wants to win this match with all of his heart. He's giving it his all here. I mean, as you can see, this gold base is the point of contention. Solar wants to eliminate it to basically kill the queen, if you will, in this chess game we're watching, but. The fact of the matter is there's no workers really even mining from it. They're all to the bottom right here. And now there's roaches in the main base. Solar's, I think, starting to realize very quickly, okay, he really just doesn't have much of anything. I can send half my army to the main base and just start to kill the last of the tech and eventually eliminate his buildings. The natural is dead. The third base, I think, has a bleeding extractor, basically. And, uh, I mean, extractors don't bleed, but I think it's very yeah. low on health is what I mean to say. And, I mean... Dark just didn't want to give this one up. A loss here almost certainly puts him uh, into relegation, so... Yeah, he's, he's going to be at 5-4. and four. Uh, If Innovation loses 0-2, I think they're tied. But, Dark did defeat yeah. Innovation, which is what would actually put him ahead, but he doesn't want to, you know, bank on that specifically as how he gets out of regular season. Really great miles here, and he took a cost of trade with the first part of the Roaches, but... Just doesn't have enough to fight. Despite the heroic last stand here, Dark is going to be pushed out of this game. His main base is in tatters. Gold base not mining. Base to the bottom right. Looks like he just set his cut drones off. there. Does, uh, does a bit of damage as Dark, he doesn't want to accept this fate, as, as we've talked about before. Uh, on the chase now is Solar saying, get out of my game, son. That's going to be it. Catching the last of these lurkers, GG, Solar shakes his fist, he will take the 2-1, and he keeps Deer's chances alive here, going into the match. Gives a high five to Classic nearly there, Classic's like, yo man, I'm not having anything to do with you, I'm just gonna go play my serious consideration, <laughs> why are you high-fiving me? Well, I, I guess if Classic lost and Dark won, maybe, maybe that would have given the chance, uh, I'm not exactly sure, I don't have them in front of me, but... Uh, that's a big win for Solar. I mean, he's got Dark's name at the end of the day. He defeats him in a best of seven, defeats him in a best of three in season one, defeats him in a best of three this time, two to one here in season two. So uh, after that first game, I really, that, really feel like that set the tone. Dark just kind of fell over and died, and I was surprised that he was able to fight back. But in the end, Solar just was uh, the stronger player. Roach defense for both sides was a little bit wonky, but I think Dark did more damage to workers, but he didn't have map vision, he didn't have overlords on the map because of the Mutalist, so he couldn't see that push coming to his fourth base that you uh, were saying you thought was the best option. He took that option, killed the fourth. And it felt like that was the beginning of the end because that forced Dark to kind of start base trading and trying to run around the map, and Solar never missed micro against the Biles, had the Mutalist there, so... When you have to fight with limited anti-air and there's mutas on the map, every time you're like, oh, do I commit here? Can I win this? The muta factor is always an extra one that's annoying to deal with. We are going to have an interview with Solar, in fact, as we are interviewing all winners tonight. So we'll get that, for you, get that translated for you guys. What a great series. So congratulations, Solar, says Hyung Young. So a very a tough match. And he did give Deer a handshake because Deer will make playoffs now. I was so relaxed. I had such an easy time today because the result didn't matter for me. I wanted to do it for Deer, but I'm I'm glad that Deer made it because of my result. It always feels like you have the upper hand over Dark whenever you guys meet. Do you feel like Dark gets intimidated when he plays against you? I could definitely feel like he was really nervous in set one, especially in terms of his micro. So I already had a good start, uh, or a good feeling starting off the series. 
So what were some of the most difficult times in the match that you faced? So, in set 3, I had a specific timing I expected him to, to use. Yeah, that's what threw me off and I wasn't really sure what to do. My hands uh, started shit slipping. Yeah, and in set 2, I just tried not to dwell on the loss, tried to put it behind me going into game 3. So in set 3, you made Lurkers and Mutilus. Uh, when did you feel like that started to work for you? The ZBZ meta is all over the place right now. You can see any kind of units. But uh, although I feel like honestly today my Mutilus were somewhat useless, so it wasn't really until Dark went for that uh, Ravager Hydra push that I felt like I won the game, talking about defending the base trade. So what would you like to say to Deer? Hey Deer, I'm really hungry. You know what to do. <laughs> you know what to do. You know what to do. We all know what he needs to do. <laughs> I'll leave it up to your imagination He's got to feed Solar exactly what he wants. So guys, we are going to go into another quick break, the last one of the night before our final match, Innovation versus Classic.